Hello, everyone, and uh, good morning or maybe uh, good uh, afternoon uh, from whatever you are meeting uh, with us uh, today. Today, we are uh, here um, to um, speak about uh, International uh, Women's uh, Day, and uh, this uh, uh, session is entitled We Are the Women of the Syrian Revolution. Today, we will be speaking with the great women, uh, none of them was doing any ordinary work. But uh, before we start, before we get to know the ladies uh, with us, I will be speaking about uh, some uh, issues related to this session. And I hope that this session will be uh, beneficial to all. Is okay. Um, um, we are today here because it's the International Women's Day, and uh, I hope. Um, we all gonna uh, like learn a lot from this amazing woman who are um, joining us today. Before I'm um, starting this, I just wanna go through uh, some housekeeping um, and especially like about the uh, 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 like the uh, the translation in this event. Uh, this event will be primarily in Arabic uh, to enable the interpret interpretation uh, function on a computer. Click the globe. Uh, in the meeting controls uh, at the bottom of your screen and choose English as the language you would like to hear. Remember uh, to also click mute original audio uh, so that you don't uh, uh, hear like the Arabic one. Um, to do this on your mobile phone, click on the three dots, uh, the language inter uh, interpre interpretation and tab on English. Um, Alex now will uh, like put this down so everyone who couldn't catch this can can see it. Uh, uh, so this session will be in Arabic uh, for those uh, who would like to uh, hear uh, the translation in English. Uh, you can do that from your computer or your uh, phone. Uh, we have interpreter Hanin with us. She will be translating from Arabic into English. Uh, in order to enable interpretation on your uh, laptop, uh, there's the globe uh, item at the bottom of the screen. You can choose uh, the English language from that globe. And uh, of course, uh, do not forget uh, to press uh, mute. Uh, original. You can also uh, listen to the translation through your uh, mobile phone. Uh, there are uh, three dots at the bottom of uh, the screen. You press on that, you find interpretation, and then you choose uh, English. And Alex will be uh, posting that in the uh, chat box so that you can follow those um, steps. I would like to welcome you all again, and I hope that uh, you uh, uh, really spend uh, valuable time, beneficial time with us uh, today. After 11 years of the Syrian revolution, we are scattered all around the world. Uh, uh, of course, we agree, we disagree on many uh, issues, and uh, there are many aspects that we went through uh, in those uh, 11 years, uh, but uh, maybe what we all agree on is that uh, uh, Syrian women have uh, provided a lot uh, um, to others and have played an essential role in those 11 years, uh, despite the fact that uh, the roles were not available for those uh, women uh, before, we were in a way or another trying on all levels, trying to fight, trying to participate uh, in a way or another in what was uh, going on. We as Syrian women. I hope that uh, this event today will uh, give us a space as Syrian women in order to uh, rethink about our status as Syrian women, in order to speak about the needs uh, of those women and the recommendations recommendations that uh, could support us and support other women regarding the future of uh, Syria. My name is Wad Khatib. I'm a Syrian journalist uh, and I'm a filmmaker as well. 
I have lived uh, the Syrian war in Aleppo. Uh, we, uh, uh, of course, uh, were displaced uh, by the Syrian regime, Russian regime, uh, by the end of uh, 2016. Uh, today, me, my husband, I, my two girls uh, live in the UK. We are trying to continue our lives uh, here in uh, England. And I'm so honored and happy to be with you uh, today. Um, of course, we will be hearing from a great uh, Syrian women. I'm so excited about that. We have with us another Rashid from Homs. She uh, has uh, also a BA uh, in administration from Damascus. Uh, she worked as uh, a teacher in Homs until she joined the White Helmets organization, Syria Civil Defense, in 2017. Nada did a lot of things and of course we can talk lengthily about each of the women and about the roles that nada played however what is special about nada is that she was a member elect in the white helmets and this happened in 2019. nada are you with us yes hello hello what how are you how's everyone we will get back to you in a while, Nada, and I will be asking you uh, more about uh, your work so that you can tell us uh, um, in details about that. I will be introducing now Ghalia, who is the founder and director of Mazaya. Mazaya is a women's rights uh, organization operating women's centers in northern Idlib uh, in Syria. I think that many have heard of Ghalia before, maybe have uh, worked with her or with uh, Mazaya. Mazaya is, um, or started as an initiative uh, and uh, Marder Adil Faris uh, was uh, one of the key founders. Uh, hello, Ghalia, welcome. Hello, how are you? We also have uh, Malika with us. Uh, she is uh, from Action for the Summer. Malaka was head nurse at Al Hakim uh, Pediatric uh, Hospital in East Aleppo. She worked at several other hospitals. Unfortunately, uh, they were bombed, and so she was out of service, uh, or they were out of service. Uh, Malaka was featured in her stories documentary uh, last year and uh, also was a participant uh, in the AFS displacement video series uh, in December. Malaka, are you with us? Hello. I'm here with you. We are so happy to have you all. We are honored to have you with us uh, today. Likewise, I hope that this session will be a space so that we can uh, share our experiences, our challenges, and if there's any way where we can help support the women listening to us, then we will do that. We want others to hear about uh, women from Syria, and uh, this is very important. Nada, Ghalia, and uh, Malika, uh, maybe each one of you can introduce herself. Uh, how do you uh, describe your work? What are the things that you would like to introduce yourself through when you talk about yourself? Um, hello, thank you, Wad. Uh, I would like to thank uh, everyone. I will be giving an overview about my life. At the beginning of the revolution, I was uh, doing uh, my final exams and uh, in Damascus and the revolution has uh, started and uh, voices of freedom were heard. Back then uh, I had a dream to graduate, to, to have a house, uh, make a family and uh, achieve my dreams. And uh, me and my friends uh, were chatting about revolution, of course, uh, at a very low voice because we didn't have the guts to discuss that. Uh, the security forces uh, at the university uh, 
cut uh, the electric power, uh, stopped uh, water supply, and they obliged us uh, to take to the streets in a demonstration supporting that regime. Uh, when I found myself on the street, I realized I'm in a real revolution. However, I decided not to look back. I wanted to move forward. Uh, I uh, sat for the uh, exams, and then I went to Rastan in Homs, uh, which is a village in Homs. And I found that revolution has already reached Rastan. Demonstrations are all over the place. And I I uh, took part in uh, many uh, demonstrations and also my brothers uh, were supporting me to do that. So I decided either I have to continue my life uh, normally, uh, like uh, the routine way, or to be part of the revolution. And so I thought I have to start working. I worked with a midwife who was almost as a doctor uh, because in our area there were not much hospitals. So I worked with this uh, midwife. She was uh, treating uh, the injured and the wounded and she helped helped whoever came to her. I paved my way with her. We used to help the injured a lot. So uh, I started dreaming of a country where I can uh, express myself, uh, where people enjoy their rights and their freedoms. And I realized that this dream will cost me a lot. I lost three of my brothers. Uh, they fell martyrs in shelling of the regime. Uh, and then I uh, joined, I, was, I became a volunteer at the Syrian Civil Defense and my husband was my great supporter. I salute him. And uh, through the Civil Defense uh, um, organization, I found my ambition. I found that it is a humanitarian organization that believes in human rights, that believes in a democratic state. And after that, there was like a crisis. Uh, I was displaced from my country. And that was on March 14, 2018. That was the last time I see my village, I see my house. So I left uh, the country and this uh, feeling of displacement was really painful. And we were kind of lost and confused when we left. Uh, after that, I moved to Idlib uh, and uh, civil defense, uh, of course, took care of all its volunteers. I uh, joined a center in Ariha and uh, I was uh, head of center and uh, I uh, worked with the civilians there. In 2019, I was elected as a uh, a uh, uh, board member at the civil defense and i think that this is an achievement not only for me but for others because i bear a lot of responsibility uh, um, because of that especially in a vulnerable societies uh, where women are vulnerable are looked at as weak uh, i believe uh, that uh, many other people look at us as heroes. And I would like to say that it is not us who are the heroes, but the, the women who are at camps, who are suffering, who are uh, sacrificing, and who are doing their best in order to um, provide for their children. So this is um, about my life in a nutshell. Thank you. Thank you, Nada. I don't know what to say in such a day, but... Um, this uh, displacement uh, memory uh, is uh, almost uh, near uh, and I totally understand what you've been uh, through and I know that it is hard to relive those memories. I also understand what it means to be, uh, to say that you are not the heroes but the uh, women who are at camps, but allow me to tell you that you are heroes as well uh, and because of you we are still hopeful and we are proud to say we are Syrians. Uh, uh, thank you. We will uh, delve further into details in a while. Ghalia, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us about you? How or what can you tell us about your work? Ghalia mm Rahal, -hmm. um, I am the founder of a Mazaya Women Organization, which is a part of the uh, URP. Uh, we defend uh, human rights uh, in general and uh, women organizations in particular. I study at uh, the Nonviolence uh, University on uh, human rights. I have uh, three kids, uh, three boys and uh, a daughter. Um, and uh, of course, uh, I have a martyr in the family. Mazaya was established as a women organization in 2013, in uh, June 2016. We started uh, working in a small uh, space uh, at the beginning uh, and uh, uh, 
it's kind it was a kind of a cellar so an underground room there was a heavy shelling on the area so a group of women used to meet in an underground cellar and since we were there we started the civilian work from that cellar and then the revolution was transformed from a peaceful revolution to an armed one and that's why most women resorted to civilian work I don't know if um, it's enough, uh, this uh, introduction now, and uh, later we can talk as you wish. If you want to uh, say more, go ahead, and the floor is yours. So, our slogan is, uh, I'm not a burden anymore, I'm a supporter. Uh, so we aim at uh, supporting uh, women, empowering them uh, socially, financially, educationally, and so on. Our goal from this empowerment is to uh, give uh, women opportunities at different levels uh, so that they would be a brave and uh, efficient as well as uh, active uh, women. Uh, we want uh, women to be uh, more capable of facing the difficult situations emanating from war. And since uh, women are the uh, current only uh, breadwinners because of the situation, because of the killing, uh, destruction, uh, and uh, this uh, displacement, uh, women uh, bear a heavier burden now. For this uh, reason, we know how important it is to have uh, efficient women and without this uh, efficiency no uh, peaceful state can be built uh, for this reason we started our uh, civil work uh, with the beginning of the armament of the revolution before that our work uh, was at the beginning of the demonstrations so we just showed that we are women at the forefront of those demonstrations everywhere but uh, the role of a woman was marginalized once the uh, revolution was armed so um, women were marginalized and they were kind of alienated from revolutions Uh, thank you, Ali. I think that those uh, details are very important and it's important to keep uh, repeating that and remembering that. So thank you a lot for all what you have mentioned about your work with Mazaya that we are very um, proud of as an organization. We have also Malika. Uh, so can you tell us, Malika, how you started? Uh, what have you done? Uh, what are you doing now? I would like to tell you thank you for the ladies uh, you have invited. Uh, uh, so I'm a really, uh, uh, I'm really very proud of everyone. You are the uh, ones inside Syria who are making us proud. We are really ashamed of ourselves because we are not inside Syria, but we are proud of you, uh, ladies. Since the beginning of the revolution, uh, I've been in uh, Aleppo. I uh, took part in uh, the demonstrations uh, in the revolution. Uh, and uh, I would like to say that uh, at the beginning of the revolution, when the peaceful revolution started, uh, we did not think that as uh, women, we can get out of that box. We did not know that uh, we are as valuable as uh, the men who are taking to the streets. Uh, Currently, I uh, teach uh, at the medical center in Aleppo. I don't know what to tell you. Just speaking about uh, our revolution, how we started, uh, it makes me uh, want to cry. When Nada uh, spoke, uh, I really had tears in my eyes. Every one of us uh, has uh, um, deployed a lot of efforts, have sacrificed in order to reach uh, where we are now. So I took part in the revolution, but there's one thing uh, that uh, made me really want to participate. Every time uh, we went uh, to the streets, we took to the streets, uh, I uh, noticed uh, how there was uh, um, the rubber bullets and then there was the live bullets. And uh, when I saw that, I thought, uh, even if I am a woman, I should 
be part of that. I should fight. I should be like them. They are being exposed to uh, this uh, beating. Uh, she means the other demonstrators. So I should be exposed to that as well because I felt that I, I have to defend uh, even those uh, youth. I want to be next to them. So I used to go uh, to the demonstrations. I uh, used to get my friends and all my connections uh, with me uh, uh, and encourage them to take part in the revolutions uh, as well. Uh, WhatsApp was not always available. So I used to tell everyone that uh, after the Friday prayers or at two, we have to be there. We have to be encouraged to participate. We should be part of that. We should uh, be part of the uprisal. We should be equal to men. This is what I used to tell them. And when And then uh, when uh, we heard that there are some uh, places or spaces that were uh, uh, liberated, uh, we uh, had this uh, uh, energy and um, we used to encounter different kinds of uh, victims, not only children, but uh, also from uh, like other people. And even if we had uh, wounded from the army, we thought we should help them. Uh, but uh, maybe uh, uh, those members in the free army, uh, we expected that they might uh, uh, refuse being treated by uh, a woman. So uh, sometimes uh, there, we used to try to help uh, some, but uh, they tried to resist and they, uh, they said, uh, I want a man to help me or to treat me, but uh, I did not take any step back. I thought now my country uh, needs me. Now is the time I have to do something. No matter what I will be exposed to, I will do what I'm doing. And then when things settled down somehow, when the free army uh, uh, reached uh, the other uh, areas, I uh, called uh, my uh, colleagues. I told them, let's open the hospital, the medical center. Let's do this, that. So of course I coordinated with the nurses, doctors, physicians, and so on. And this is how we started working. And uh, women, uh, really uh, were under the spotlight. Uh, they had a lot of roles to play. Uh, you mentioned that I was a head nurse, uh, but uh, at some times uh, there were people from inside the hospital who refused uh, that I be a head nurse at the hospital because I am a woman. So there were male nurses who resisted this idea that how can a woman be um, leading me? So um, they refused uh, that uh, uh, I be their uh, boss. But despite uh, all of that, me and my friends, my colleagues uh, were uh, so uh, um, were so committed to this uh, work, and we believed that women are equal to men. Maybe women are more uh, emotional, maybe, but uh, we are equal uh, to men, and we are here helping humans, and that's why uh, we believed in our work. So that's all for now. Thank you, thank you. You have mentioned some details, but this was uh, very beneficial, and uh, this is a much needed. Uh, uh, so we have to always remember that. Uh, thank you for sharing. I will open the floor for uh, questions. Uh, um, if anyone would like to uh, answer, any one of you, you can uh, you can do that. Uh, so we want to have this um, casual discussion among each other, and I hope that everybody will get their um, answers. Uh, I would like to understand. How have the revolution impacted you? What was the impact of the revolution on you? And how the war have uh, 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 impacted you? Malake, in the end, uh, have uh, talked about uh, us changing as a woman. I don't know, would any one of you uh, comment on that? Ghalia, Malake, or Nada? I can comment on that. The war had made us um, suffer, uh, if I can say. You know how many times uh, I was uh, wounded uh, uh, and uh, every time I had to go to Turkey to get the treatment and come back. So uh, the war have made us uh, tougher. Uh, uh, I mean, as um, physicians or nurses, when we see a lot of people uh, being killed, a lot of people dying, a lot of people uh, uh, getting uh, wounded, and you were with us, Wad, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Sometimes I tried, you know what, not to listen to uh, uh, 
to the uh, patients. Uh, I try to, 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 to not listen what they're saying. Uh, whenever a massacre took place, uh, we were not uh, at the hospital only. We used to take the cars and run to the closest hospital to help because there was coverage needed and uh, no one hospital can uh, provide uh, healthcare service to anyone. And of course, uh, uh, shelling was very random. It did not differentiate between a hospital, a homes, uh, civilian homes, uh, um, schools or so on. So, uh, you know what I did? I tried uh, just to, to close my ears, not to listen to the patients. I said, we have to work. Uh, even if a colleague uh, um, passed away in front of us, uh, a nurse maybe, uh, we, we, we tried not to, not, to, not to just focus on that because sometimes three of our colleagues went on a mission. They came back two and not three, but we tried to keep our feelings aside. Uh, uh, we try to, to forget about our colleagues because now is not the time for mourning or for being sad and it's time to be efficient. So uh, for some or at some moments, I felt I'm not a human anymore. I lost my humanity. I'm very uh, compassionate usually, I'm very emotional, but I used to see those scenes in front of me uh, without having emotions. I thought I just have to help, I have to aid. I don't have to have any feelings now towards what I'm saying. So I felt as if I lost my humanity. As a woman, as a mother, I'm a mother for two kids. I felt I have no feelings anymore. Even my daughters, uh, my two daughters, uh, at some time, I felt that Aleppo is very dangerous for them. And I, frankly, I neglected my daughters. I'm always at hospitals. I'm always at work. I did, I rarely went home. I even forgot how my home looks like. I'm always among blood uh, uh, hospitals, um, even or I'm either going to another hospital to support other colleagues. That's why I um, sent my uh, kids uh, to another governorate and I stayed in Aleppo. So at some moment, what I was among my colleagues, and the situation was kind of uh, calm and i was trying to remember the shape how uh, of my kids how do my kids look i barely remembered how my daughters looked so i asked my uh, my uh, colleagues uh, you know, we were always uh, busy and we never kept the uh, pictures uh, of our beloved ones. Uh, and uh, we barely had time to call others. So I was sitting between my colleagues and I told them, guys, how do my girls look like? Can you remind me? Because um, I felt as if my humanity has been taken away from me. That's what I meant by we have become tougher. I totally understand what you're talking about, uh, this, those details, uh, I totally relate. Uh, Ghalia, what about you? Uh, what, how was your life impacted uh, by the war, by the revolution? Of course, uh, all of that has had an impact on our lives uh, and uh, we have lost many of uh, our uh, heroes, of our best uh, people. But uh, how has that impacted you, the war or the revolution as a woman? Of course, what? We try not to be uh, pessimistic. Uh, we try not to look at the negative uh, only. There's always a positive and negative. There's always optimism among the pessimism. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we have lost uh, our uh, beloved ones uh, during war. We have lost our families. Uh, my three children were displaced uh, before Khalid uh, passed away, fell as a martyr. I work in the north and I'm alone. My family is not with me. Uh, so it is really hard uh, to... Uh, um, be or have a lot of hopes and uh, during war you find out that you have lost all of your hopes uh, the family that you have built you have lost it uh, uh, so um, this is the situation of all Syrian women and not uh, us but uh, we cannot uh, be uh, uh, without uh, consciousness we have consciousness we have feelings we have emotions despite the pain that we were subject to despite uh, all the hard situations that we have passed through we have promises we have promises between us and the martyrs we have promises that we have made to the detainees we have promises towards the people who had faith in us so we promise that we will continue the situation we pass through is very hard we were displaced uh, uh, we uh displaced uh, we were displaced from uh, southern idlib of course uh, after uh, uh, the regime did the burnt land with uh, russia we went to the north 
but uh, despite uh, the uh, misery we passed through, the depression we were we passed through, we believe that we have to give. We cannot surrender. We cannot give up our dreams, our uh, values, our promises. That's why the start was after displacement uh, in 2019, and this was the turning point. That was a very difficult situation. After we lost our children, after we were displaced, it was really very hard to merge, to integrate into society, into a new society. It is really hard to move to another place to get used to their customs traditions and at the same time you have to give you have to be strong you have to make others strong as well so our work at the second phase was not an easy one after displacement i mean however women um, gathering uh, women unity gave us a strength and the people's trust in us gave us a strength uh, the revolution has taught us a lot of things we were unaware that uh, March uh, 8 uh, was a kind of a, a data uh, uh, intentional uh, made by the um, uh, by by uh, by the regime, we did not know before that March 8 was International Women's Day because the regime has not allowed uh, many of that. Uh, so um, I know uh, very well how women live uh, in uh, camps, uh, but uh, despite all of that, they are strong. It's not only us who's doing great job, but uh, those at camps as well. I believe that every woman inside Syria is, is strong, uh, even if she's just uh, smiling in front of her kids in the morning so that they can go to work or whatever. This woman is doing great job. She is a strong woman only through this smile. And uh, we believe that no country, no peaceful uh, country can be built uh, without uh, the uh, um, giving of uh, women uh, without the role of women. This is what we have uh, learned. Uh, so we have to be at the forefront so that we really find the, uh, find back or get back the land that we have lost. Uh, we want to achieve our dreams. Uh, uh, we want to achieve our objectives. And we cannot do that if we were not one hand. Uh, and I would like to thank the ladies you're hosting today and uh, the other ladies uh, who are at Decision Make making positions who are at the political uh, maybe uh, positions who uh, have a role in the civil defense uh, civil organizations healthcare centers the schools all of those are great women are sacrificing women uh, and they are still continuing despite the war they have not uh, surrendered of course the war had had a negative impact on us but there were a positive impact as well and we should uh, acknowledge that thank you Ghalia. and uh, of course uh, me and uh, others with us I would like to thank you and others for all the efforts you've uh, made. What about you, Nada? How uh, do you think that uh, your life uh, was affected? Uh, and how did this uh, impact your work? You were a teacher before and you have become part of the civil defense. Uh, so uh, how has everything uh, affected you? I totally agree with uh, Ghalia. Uh, there was a personal impact of the revolution on us because every one of us has lost uh, uh, somebody at least uh, from his uh, family. I lost three of my brothers. <coughs> But uh, we thought that we have to uh, seek uh, establishing a state that uh, guarantees a human dignity and provides human dignity. Uh, furthermore, the revolution has changed generations. Even the attention uh, of uh, generation has changed. Uh, for example, I was studying uh, business management. Uh, I never thought in my life that I will be a first aider. And that's why we believed more in uh, certain values. Uh, I am a volunteer at the civil defense, and uh, that's why the revolution has uh, made me more committed. Uh, now I totally believe that I have to continue what I'm doing. I have to keep uh, seeking a change. We have to demand for this and that, the things that we went uh, uh, or that we took to the streets uh, for. Uh, at the civil defense, we were exposed to several risks, uh, uh, for instance, uh, shelling, bombardment, uh, and uh, even the civil defense uh, teams uh, were uh, specifically targeted. Uh, 
294 volunteers uh, were uh, targeted and killed. And also there are uh, social uh, risks also that we are subject to. Uh, when the women joined the civil defense, the society uh, kind of refused that. It didn't accept this idea. Women should uh, work in a certain domain. Uh, so we found a lot of uh, problems. And also there were uh, uh, problems emanating from the vulnerable society we live in. Uh, so. Uh, the society has a lot of needs and our um, our capabilities are weak we respond to shelling we respond to uh, um, or we help uh, the wounded the injured and this uh, exerts a lot of psychological pressure on us Also, we were subject to uh, health risks. Uh, whenever we uh, respond, uh, we are subject to a lot of uh, uh, risks. There was also the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, contagious diseases, uh, all of these were risks. Um, in addition to electronic risks, uh, we at the civil defense were subject to electronic risks, especially uh, women. Uh, women are um, exposed to bullying. As to the cyber risks, uh, since we are the first respondents and there were a lot of uh, like parasites uh, from the Russians on the civil defense uh, apparatus. Uh, and that's why all women at the civil defense uh, have become strong women, uh, different women, if I might say. Thank you a lot. Uh, there are many important points that you have raised and there are points that we somehow kind of uh, forget uh, we sometimes uh, um, say that we are used to those uh, issues but uh, this is not uh, normal uh, so um, we always have to repeat uh, this uh, so that uh, women who are uh, trying uh, to do something will um, expect what they are uh, doing uh, so as uh, Syrian uh, women, always there's a sacrifice, and we totally understand that. Uh, so, Ghalia, I want to get back to you to ask you, what do you think is our utmost need now as Syrian women inside Syria? You work with women, you deal with the volunteers. So what do Syrian women inside Syria uh, mainly need? We need a, a safe place. We need peace. We want to go back to our homes. We need support. Uh, we need, uh, uh, of course, uh, financial support and psychological support. Uh, what? Let me tell you that uh, women inside uh, Syria are passing through a lot and women need strength in order to continue. There are no weak women inside the Syria. There are no uh, lazy women and active women. All women are equal, but some women had opportunities and other women did not uh, seize or were not offered any opportunity yet. That's why I hope uh, that uh, uh, women would be provided uh, further uh, opportunities. Uh, I hope that uh, educational opportunities would be provided uh, to women. This uh, would enhance uh, women's strength and make women uh, at the forefront. Uh, women would not uh, break down uh, whenever they are empowered. Uh, women would not uh, have this feeling of being a burden on anyone. Uh, uh, women would like to uh, uh, feel uh, as supporters to others and not uh, another burden. Uh, Most uh, families now um, depend on women. The main breadwinners are women, and uh, women are subject to violence. We were subject to different uh, types of uh, violence. I will not uh, be, I don't want to uh, be talking about specific women. I'm here talking about uh, women in general, uh, women who want uh, to uh, be uh, strong or who try, women who try to be strong uh, are usually um, challenged by uh, others. I don't want to generalize uh, here. There are people who uh, know very well that if women are uh, strong, then the whole society will be strong but uh, there are certain entities uh, 
uh, who would benefit more if uh, women stayed vulnerable, stayed weak. That's why we need a continuous support, uh, sustainable support. We have, we want war to stop. We want to go back to our homes. We need uh, this uh, family um, um, social ambiance that we lost. So we need a lot of things. The war has uh, destroyed a lot of things inside us and outside us. Thank you, uh, Ghalia. Um, well, with every word you're saying, uh, uh, my heart is listening to you, uh, really. And I hope that this voice will be heard and that many would be able to support you, to help you, to be a support to you and to all the people inside Syria. I just want to add a point. Uh, always uh, the political situation and the war uh, changes kind of uh, uh, the path of uh, certain societies uh, from peaceful to non-peaceful uh, we here are uh, four million uh, people and uh, always political uh, paths change the whole situation currently we have no education no schools uh, we do not uh, have the basic uh, needs uh, in life this is because of the security uh, uh, situation and uh, the highest cost is uh, being uh, uh, is being here uh, paid by women Thank you. Malika, I would like to close those questions with uh, a question to you. What is uh, your wish for the future of a woman in Syria? What if you uh, give me some time, I would like to continue what uh, Ghalia has mentioned regarding the previous uh, question. I'm currently in Syria and uh, I uh, do not leave uh, Syria, but uh, what uh, Ghalia talked about is very important. Uh, uh, when uh, we were displaced, um, social cohesion was a uh, very hard or social integration. I cannot understand how I left uh, the place where I belong to. Uh, I found that uh, people are different uh, here. So this integration or merging into a new society was very uh, hard. I was really confused. Uh, of course, uh, I am proud of having uh, served uh, my country during revolution, and this is the only thing I do not regret that I had a role to play. But uh, now, since since uh, we uh, worked uh, at uh, a pediatrician, uh, pediatrician hospital, uh, we uh, mainly have uh, children and women. Uh, I will tell you about one thing that really um, affected me. Uh, you know, uh, Dr. Mahmoud, the head of the hospital, and I was talking to him and I was crying. I told him, uh, imagine a girl came to me and she told me that uh, she cannot uh, uh, provide the food for her children, uh, this lady. Uh, so she told me, are you Yazan's uh, mother? And I said, yes, uh, how can I help you? And she said, I heard a lot about you and uh, I cannot uh, provide for my children. So she told me, would you take my uh, son and raise him? So she was uh, ready to give up her child. Uh, so she was offering that I take her uh, son because uh, she can't provide uh, for him. Her uh, husband was a martyr and she cannot uh, provide uh, food or anything for that son. She even told me, Maybe you can uh, make our voices heard among uh, among uh, international organizations. Uh, and uh, she said, even if I want to uh, ask for milk, I uh, am always uh, subject to, to exploitation, to harassment, uh, because they exploit uh, uh, the need of uh, this uh, woman. Uh, and uh, Ms. Ghalia uh, touched upon that. So they think uh, we have uh, to abuse this woman in order to provide her with uh, a um, food ration or for uh, uh, to provide her with milk. So harassment is a real issue. Uh, exploitation as well. They exploit uh, and they make use of uh, the weakness of this amount. And they know that those women have no men. Uh, they uh, are martyrs, most of them. So uh, uh, they, they make use of that. She said, uh, I cannot provide for my children. I'm always uh, exposed to, to harassment. Uh, so if you take my son, I would really be thankful. So just imagine uh, what she was uh, ready uh, to do. I was... Uh,
I also uh, I also encountered uh, a lady whose son was uh, sick. He had uh, lung problems because uh, they stuff whatever material they have in the heaters in order to warm themselves. Uh, so just imagine. Uh, women have a basic right just as having a home uh, 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 walls uh, um, furniture at least so she was hoping that she would have this home and not live in a tent because uh, we're always afraid of the hot weather and of the wind sometimes to blow away this tent so just uh, imagine all she wished for was four walls to protect herself and to live with her family the status or the situation of our women is really bad I second uh, what uh, the colleagues have mentioned uh, regarding the question that you have uh, raised. Uh, I can say that uh, women require uh, financial empowerment and educational empowerment or capacity building. Uh, I totally agree with Galia on what she said. Uh, we in our society, uh, women need real support, uh, support from uh, organizations, uh, and uh, from the civil society, uh, institutions have to support women. At the civil defense, I would like to give an example. At the civil defense, uh, we have played a key role. Uh, um, the civil defense uh, has uh, given uh, further roles to women, have allowed women to reach decision-making positions, whereas other organizations uh, only um, uh, wanted women to uh, be among them, just to, to, to give an image that we have women among us. But women need uh, real support. Uh, this year, uh, civil defense uh, increased the percentage of uh, women participation. Uh, women reached uh, high managerial positions. Uh, the head uh, of uh, accountability uh, is a woman. Uh, the head of a program um, development is a woman. Uh, the CEO is a woman. So women have a more uh, rights now at the civil defense. Even the percentage of uh, women members at civil defense has increased. Uh, and uh, now uh, women representation at civil defense is 30%. So I hope uh, that civil society or, or organizations uh, or national organizations uh, provide women with uh, roles that they uh, really deserve. I agree with you. Uh, of course, um, every um, point you're raising is a real need, a dire need. And while you're speaking, I'm thinking, how can we change this? Uh, time is really flying. Uh, I think that uh, we have or we need uh, several hours to discuss all of that. Of course, what you're saying is very important. Uh, it is uh, not uh, any kind of repetition, but we want to give the floor to um, many participants uh, with us uh, today. I can see that uh, many questions are being uh, raised. And thank you for the team who's helping in organizing uh, those uh, questions. Uh, thank you all, um, or uh, all the participants are uh, thanking you, ladies, uh, for what you're doing, and they're asking how they can help. Uh, one of the questions uh, raised uh, was about uh, the responsiveness of uh, female respondents to COVID-19 in Syria. I think, Nada, you have worked on that. Uh, to a great extent, and uh, Ghalia and Mazaya also, you uh, faced those uh, risks. Uh, uh, also, uh, Malika um, at the hospital, you also worked on that. Uh, so uh, can you um, really, in a nutshell, talk about that? I don't want to ask you to uh, summarize or to be concise, but please uh, mention that quickly so that uh, we know how COVID has uh, impacted your work in a way or another. Thank you. Nada. At the beginning, when COVID started, we were not uh, responding. But then many cases came to uh, women's centers. Uh, so the women's centers decided uh, to respond to COVID-19. And it also tried to respond uh, at home. Uh, so we uh, used to go to the camps to um, provide support because many couldn't uh, come to the centers. And uh, some uh, civil defense uh, volunteers, female volunteers, uh, uh, went uh, to certain homes in order to provide uh, primary health care. Uh, 
And uh, previously, there were many cases uh, of uh, COVID, uh, a lot of responsiveness has been made, and uh, uh, we had uh, certain cars or specific cars at uh, the civil defense uh, to uh, transport uh, COVID patients. So this is um, in a nutshell. And that I was talking about uh, transporting uh, the patients to uh, a hospital. So how were the hospitals uh, uh, welcoming or hosting those uh, patients? Um, we did not uh, have a specialized hospitals when COVID started. Uh, there were certain divisions at uh, hospitals, uh, but uh, uh, in the northern um, mountainous area, um, COVID uh, like uh, was uh, uh, common. We tried to raise awareness. Uh, we uh, told people how to uh, stay safe. But uh, people were not uh, committing themselves to uh, our instructions. Uh, but then COVID uh, cases uh, were on the rise and many uh, even uh, passed away. I've seen uh, many women uh, who were pregnant, some aborted, uh, some uh, passed away uh, because of uh, COVID. Uh, some husbands do not allow their women to go to hospitals because they believe that everything will be OK, and this is how they lost their lives. Uh, I have worked on COVID cases. Most of them were women and pregnant women, unfortunately, and we used to lose the mother and the uh, newborn. Yeah, you're right. Uh, awareness raising about COVID was a real issue, not only in Syria, but around the world. Ghalia, how was Mazaya responding to uh, COVID, or how was uh, Mazaya organization working in the light of uh, COVID, during COVID? So before COVID reached uh, northern areas, there was uh, a team that volunteered to sew um, so, um, masks uh, that uh, we made and distributed to healthcare centers, uh, uh, hospitals, schools at the same time. Uh, also, there was a small uh, a place uh, where women um, made up uh, sanitizers and they used to also distribute that. So the team uh, or the volunteer team used to go to uh, tents and so on to raise awareness and they used to distribute that there. The main challenge was that uh, we are in a war, but uh, we did not uh, give uh, great attention to the pandemic, uh, uh, not only as people, uh, also us as uh, professionals, uh, uh, we were, uh, or we thought that we will die uh, by shelling, by explosions, so on. So we didn't really care about uh, COVID-19. So, there were some uh, hospitals that closed because of the lack of support, uh, and uh, here we find contradiction. Uh, some cases are uh, a priority compared to others, uh, and uh, as a civil society organization, uh, we are not physicians. Uh, however, we had to raise awareness among people. We had to tell them that it is important to, to uh, stay safe, to avoid certain issues, although this was not uh, very uh, efficient. Uh, but uh, Delta um, led to a lot of uh, deaths. Uh, but um, in 2019, the numbers uh, decreased, and uh, we were kind of negligent. So the main instructions were to uh, wear a mask and to clo to wash your hands. Uh, those uh, two um, steps are very simple and uh, clear, but uh, in uh, um, camps uh, where there are more than 2,000 people, you can't expect a lot of commitment. And in some places, there is no water. So how do you expect them to wash their hands? Uh, um, so those uh, main recommendations uh, were followed by many people, but not maybe inside Syria. This was uh, a challenge. What uh, we were really shy to tell people you have to maintain social distancing because I lived in a camp for seven months. The situation is very difficult inside the camp. So how can we ask people to maintain social distancing inside the camp? 
الاخرين كيف بد... كيف بدنا نعمل تبعهم؟ Sometimes eight people live in one tent, so how can they uh, maintain this social distancing? So we were we sounded illogical, you know. Even other countries, uh, developed countries uh, that have a, a security, peace, and so on, they couldn't control uh, COVID transmission. So just imagine how the situation was uh, uh, inside Syria. Of course, uh, you're doing a great job, and any gap you can bridge would be great. Uh, we expect people to uh, not uh, maybe be committed, but uh, you have tried uh, your best. Uh, of course, we understand. Uh, we will uh, have one final question, unfortunately, because of uh, time. I wish there was more time to do that. Uh, what can change uh, the situation of uh, Syrian women in Syria in the light of uh, war and uh, all the uh, need? Um, and all the gaps. Ghalia, would you like to start? What would change the situation of women? Providing women uh, with a value, giving her a value, and uh, having women at the forefront in order to build uh, a peace and secure uh, country uh, would make a change. Uh, women going back to their homes, uh, this is what uh, women need and what would change the situation. Without women, uh, no peaceful agreement can be achieved and uh, no uh, total uh, peace can be achieved. We know uh, how valuable uh, women are to their country. Uh, Syrian women, as I have said before, uh, need uh, a lot of uh, economic uh, support and psychological support, uh, moral support. I mean, uh, recently we've made uh, a needs assessment at um, camps and uh, most uh, women were asking for economic support and the job opportunities in addition to psychosocial support uh, and uh, of course uh, this all is unavailable because i have as i have said uh, um, areas and countries are supported based on political affiliation so this marginalization is really a very clear internally and externally thank you Ghalia. What can you tell us about the future of Syrian women today? How do you think, uh, um, or what would be a, a, a dream maybe uh, for uh, Syria? In the light of uh, war, uh, we cannot talk about uh, any future. This is what I believe in. Uh, when uh, a war stops and reconstruction starts, uh, I think that um, the participation of women in um, reconstruction in peacekeeping and decision making providing women with a real role to play so uh, women uh, have a lot of uh, capabilities and making use of that is uh, what i uh, wish for malika So, uh, unfortunately, this is the last um, intervention. And if any one of you, uh, or this is the last question, and if any one of you wants to add anything, please uh, do that. Uh, Malika, where do you find hope now? Where do we get hope from? Oh, this is a tough question, hard question to answer. From our love to our country, I refuse to leave the country despite all the challenges, uh, all what we went through. I love my country a lot uh, and I hope uh, that things will change. I hope that we will achieve social justice. We will have a homogeneous uh, uh, society that provides uh, women with their rights. So my love to my country is uh, my only hope. Uh, I want to say that uh, every woman inside Syria, every lady inside Syria have confronted the war, have uh, um, protected her children despite uh, all the problems. And this is a lady who deserves not uh, only uh, like uh, raising the hat or a hat off for her, but uh, this is uh, a great woman because she has uh, protected her children. She's trying her best despite everything, despite the bad situation at camps uh, to uh, make the best out of her children. I think uh, that uh, we are all proud of such uh, women. Every woman inside Syria uh, in the light of the war is a woman of capability.
disparities, uh, is a woman who has a lot. Uh, uh, those women just uh, need uh, some psychosocial support, some economic support, uh, some awareness raising, uh, need like this a small push so that uh, she can show uh, her capabilities. And every woman, a woman has capabilities, uh, but uh, they need a small support. Uh, uh, but uh, women uh, not all recognize uh, the capabilities they have, but all those women are respectful. And uh, um, the greatest thing they've done is that they have survived uh, in, in this war. Ghalia, would you like to close, uh, to say something before we close? I would like to tell um, Syrian women in particular, you are really a source of pride. Uh, you are a pride uh, through your uh, giving uh, beauty, uh, sacrifice. Uh, um, we know that uh, no achievement can be made, uh, no war shall end uh, without giving a woman a role, without having women in different places. Uh, I would like to say as well that to women who are activists. Uh, uh, every woman should uh, do her best, uh, should uh, do her uh, job. Uh, this uh, task is not an easy one. Uh, we uh, have a consciousness, we have a dignity, we have a goal, we have an objective, we are following. That's why we always need support. We need people who can support us, stand by us so that uh, we can continue and uh, uh, we can move forward. Uh, this is our country in the end, Wad. Uh, it is very hard to um, be detached from your uh, uh, country. Uh, we uh, believe this is our land and we promised many people that we will uh, achieve our dream and our objective. And in this day, I would like to uh, here uh, salute all women uh, to congratulate them for this uh, day, International Women's Day. And I hope that we always see you at the best situation Situation. I'm uh, always very sad when I see uh, women who have potential, who can be at the highest positions in life, but uh, they are not uh, because of the circumstances. Uh, uh, thank you, Ghalia. I second what you've said. We are all ears, uh, and uh, everything you said uh, is uh, very important. Uh, Nada, would you like to uh, say some closing remarks? Uh, I also agree with uh, Ghalia. I would like uh, to salute uh, all uh, workers in the humanitarian domain. I would like to say that you are uh, all uh, female heroes uh, or heroines. And uh, I would like to uh, tell uh, all women, including uh, women uh, who are volunteers at the civil defense, uh, um, I would like to encourage them to uh, learn, to study, to achieve their dreams, to become decision makers. And I hope that all women build their own capabilities. Uh, um, and may God be with you. Thank you. May God be with you. Um, I don't know what to say. Malika, would you like to say a closing remark? We uh, are real in need, uh, are in real need for such uh, discussions um, so that uh, all Syrian women can hear us. Uh, uh, they have suffered, we suffered, they have faced their challenges, we did the same. So I hope uh, that uh, uh, those discussions uh, are more frequent for longer period of times, uh, more frequently so that we all benefit. Uh, and uh, we um, wish you a happy Women's Day every day and every year. And we hope we will celebrate through the liberation of uh, our country. And we hope that you will all come back to Syria in order we all celebrate uh, because we all miss you in Syria. I would like to thank uh, all uh, the ladies uh, today. You are uh, not uh, only uh, flowers uh, uh, with us uh, today, but uh, uh, you really are doing great. I would like to thank uh, women uh, workers at the civil defense and healthcare, uh, and we are so uh, proud of you. You are the hope that uh, is uh, keeping a lot of uh, uh, women and men outside Syria still have this uh, hope. Uh, think about the future in Syria, uh, and uh, we hope that uh, one day everything will be okay because there are people like you inside Syria. We thank you a lot uh, on behalf of uh, all uh, the audience uh, uh, and 
and all uh, those who have organized this session today and i hope that you will always uh, be okay and fine hopefully we will uh, meet uh, soon not uh, only uh, uh, distantly but uh, face to face i hope that we will have more discussions together and i hope that your voices will always be high and your achievements will be great uh, i would like to thank uh, all the people who listened to us uh, today uh, maybe they didn't have that chance to speak but i would like to thank them for their kind listening uh, thank you for uh, um, listening to us and i hope that our voice will always uh, be uh, heard thank you a lot uh, ladies Thank you for all those uh, who were listening. Uh, thank you for all the questions that, that you have uh, asked. I'm sorry you raised a lot of questions, but we could not uh, answer them all. You've seen how tight uh, the time was, uh, and you've seen how uh, the ladies uh, have uh, mentioned a lot of details. I would like uh, also uh, to thank uh, all those who were with us. I would like to thank the organizers. Uh, and I hope that uh, we will have another session uh, soon. Uh, see you. Um, bye.